Welcome everyone to part two of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this Superstar Destroyer bridge. So in this part we're going to be doing a bunch more modeling. Real quick though before we start, this video was brought to you by my course on how to create this sci-fi space station corridor in Blender. So it's a five part tutorial series where I show you step by step in real time how to create this sci-fi space station corridor in Blender EV. If you're interested in learning more about the course or if you're interested in purchasing, then I'll have a link in the description where you can purchase on my Gumroad and my Patreon. And purchasing the course is a really great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. All right, so let's get started with the modeling now. So what I want to start by doing is creating some big round beams on the sides, kind of on the top that go down the room. So to start off, I'm going to press Shift C, and that's going to make sure that this 3D cursor is in the very center. I can now press Shift A, and I'm going to go right down here, and I'm going to add a cylinder. And then I want to tab into edit mode, and I'm going to press R to rotate, and I want to rotate it on the X axis, and then I'm going to type in 90 and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. And then I want to press G to grab. We're going to kind of move it up here. And also I can press zero to go into the camera view uh, just so that we can see that. And then I want to press S to scale and I want to scale it on the Y axis. And I'm going to scale that out pretty far so that it's going through the wall here and also going through over here. So you can't see it through the camera. And then I'll also press G to grab and kind of pull this back a little bit. I'll now press zero again on the numpad just to preview that. So I want to press S to scale and I want to scale it down a little bit, make that a bit smaller. And then also I can press S and X again, actually S and Y to scale it on the Y axis and just make it a little bit longer. Uh, if it's too small when you were scaling it. And now I'll tab back into object mode and I can just shade this object smooth. And then also there are some shading issues because you can see this face right here is very smooth. So what I'm gonna do is tap into edit mode and I'm gonna press three or click right up here to the face select and I'm just going to select this face. I can now press X to delete and I want to delete the faces and then I can navigate over here and let's see, I need to press Z to go into wireframe and I'm just going to select this face right here and I'll press X to delete and I want to delete faces. And then if I press zero to go back into the camera view, I can go back into the solid view. I wanna press S and Y again and just make sure that's going all the way through there. And then I wanna scale the whole thing up just a little bit and I want to kind of stick it up into the wall. So the beams do seem to go into the wall a little bit. Um, I am looking at reference images of like screenshots from the movie and it does seem like the beams here go up into the wall. So I'm just going to push it up there into the wall and then I can tab back into object mode. So now what I want to do is I want to add a mirror modifier so it's duplicated over to the other side. So I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to add the mirror modifier and that way you can see now it's over there on the other side. And then I want to tab into edit mode and I'll just press G to grab and kind of move it a little bit farther back something like that. So now what I want to do is I want to create some little circular pieces which are going around here. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I want to just select everything and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it. And then after that, I'm going to press S to scale and then I want to scale it on the Y axis. So I'm just going to hit Y and then I'm going to scale it way down so it's much smaller, something like that. And then I'll press S to scale and Y on the Y axis and I'll just bring that down a little bit more and then click to place that. And then I can press S to scale and I'll scale that up a little bit as well. So now what I can do is I can press E to extrude, but then I wanna also press S to scale it and I wanna scale it down. And then I don't wanna scale it on the Y axis because I don't want it to get any thinner back and forth. So I'm going to now press Shift Y and that way it's going to scale it on the Z axis and the X axis, but it won't scale on the Y axis. So I can just bring it down a little bit just like that and then click to place that. So I wanna make this a separate object now. So I'm going to hover my mouse over this and press L and that's going to select the linked vertices and then I want to duplicate this and make it its own object. So I'm going to press P and then I can click on separate by selection. And then I want to recalculate the normals. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and then I just want to press A to select everything. And then to recalculate the normals, I'm going to press shift N and that'll fix some of those shading issues. Now you can see that this doesn't have very much topology and it's shaded smooth. So it looks very smooth and round and I don't want this. So what I'm going to do is add the bevel modifier to smooth out the edges. So to add the bevel modifier, I'm just going to click on add modifier here on the 
modifier properties. And I'm gonna go right down here and I'm gonna add a bevel. And then on the amount here, I need to turn this down quite a bit because it's way too big. So I'm gonna turn it way down and then I'll turn the segments up to like a four. Now, if I zoom in here, you can see that it does look just a tiny little bit blocky and I don't want this. So I'm gonna select this object and then I'm going to press control one. And that is the shortcut key for adding a subdivision surface. And then I just want a levels viewport and render both just to be at one. So right here, I'm gonna change the render to one and that way it's just going to render with one subdivision surface and there we go so you can see now it's much more smooth right there so i now want to just select this object and i'm going to tab into edit mode and i want to press period on the numpad just to jump over to it so i now want to press s to scale and i want to scale it on the y-axis and you can see it is a little bit laggy so i could actually maybe turn these segments down a little bit just so it's not quite as laggy and also the subdivision surface here this is also going to help to make it more laggy now i want it to render with the subdivision subdivision surface, but we actually don't need to preview the subdivision surface in our view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button right here. And this way it's going to hide the subsurf from our view, but then it will actually show up in the final render. So now you can see that the preview times are a lot faster. So I'll press G to grab and Y on the Y axis, and I'm just going to bring that over just like that and click to place that. And then I want to press Shift D to duplicate and bring it over on the Y axis. And this one I'm just going to bring kind of over there and then click to place that. And I think I wanna scale this down and make it a bit smaller. Then I'll press Shift D again, and I'll press Y to move it over on the Y axis. And I just wanna bring it somewhere over here. And if I press zero to go into the camera view, yeah, I want it to be somewhere right there, but I think I'll press G to grab and Y on the Y axis. And I just wanna bring it over a little bit farther and then just click to place that. So something like that. So I now want to select this object right here, and then I'm going to tab into edit mode. So what I want to do is I want to extrude backs in some little pieces right here. So I'm going to select one of these pieces and I'll press E to extrude, and we're going to extrude that back a bit and then click to place that. And then we also want to add the bevel modifier onto this because you can see, because it's shaded smooth, there's some weird shading issues. So on this object, I'm going to click on add modifier and we can just add the bevel modifier. And then I want to turn the amount down pretty small. So I'm going to turn that way down and then I I think I'll turn the segments just to three. So I can now tab back into edit mode and I just want to select another piece. I think I'll shift and select both of these and then I'll press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that back in a little bit and then click to place that. And then I do want to just give this object a little bit more detail because it is a little bit low resolution. So what I'm gonna do is again, press control one and control one is going to give it a subdivision surface. You can also just click right up here and add modifier and you can add a subdivision surface. Now, if I scroll down here, you can see this is the subdivision surface and I just want the render to just be set to one um, and that is looking much better. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna create a little lip right here um, there's going to be a little metal lip kind of coming up here around that edge. So to create this, I'm going to select this and then I will tab into edit mode. I'm now just going to zoom over here and I'm going to hold down the alt key and I'm just going to click right here and that's going to select this ring of vertices. Now you can see it didn't select these other vertices. So I'm going to now hold down the shift key and I'm just going to shift select all these vertices and then I need to zoom in here and I'm going to shift select all these vertices. So I'm now going to press shift D and Z and we're going to bring this up and then just click to place that. And then I want to separate this into its own object. So to do that, I'm going to press P and then I'm going to separate by selection. That way it's now its own object and I can tab back into object mode and I can just select this object and then tab into edit mode. I'm now going to press A to select everything and I want to press G and Z and I'm going to bring it down. So it's just a little bit higher. So something like that. And then I can press seven on the numpad to go to top view and I can press Z, move my mouse over and let go to go into the wireframe view. So I can now press S to scale and I wanna scale this up so it's a little bit bigger. And then I need to press G to grab and just kind of move this over. So I'll now press S to scale and I wanna scale the entire thing up a little bit, but then I also wanna press S and X and I wanna scale it out on the X axis just like that and then scale it up a little bit. So basically these edges here, the difference between this and this, I want it to be about the same all the way around, just pretty even. So something like that is pretty good. Although I do need to press S and Y and just kind of push that in a little bit more. All right, so I can look around there and I can see this is about the same and over there and also right there. So I can now press Z and go back into the solid view and I want to extrude this down. So I'm gonna press E to extrude and Z on the Z axis and I'm just gonna extrude this down a little bit. You can go into wireframe view and just press G and Z 
and bring that down just so that we have that little lip right there. So now I want to give it some thickness right here and kind of thicken that up. So to do that, I'm going to click on add modifier and I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to add the solidify modifier. And then if I go right down here, I want to turn this thickness to a negative value. And if I turn it to a negative value, now you can see that it's going up right there. Now you can see that there are some weird issues here. This is kind of going out and there's also some weird issues over here. And this is because I need to recalculate the normals. So I'm going to press A a couple times to make sure everything is selected. And then I'm going to press Shift N and that will recalculate the normals. So now on the thickness, I actually need to change this. So I need to actually change it back to a positive value. And I'm just going to make this just thick enough to go through it all. So just like that. And then I also need to press G to grab and just kind of move that over a little bit. And then I need to make it a little bit thicker and that way it's going to cover everything. Now there's also another problem and that is this bevel modifier is before the solidify. So what it's doing is it's solidifying the bevel and I don't want this because it's causing some issues here and it's also causing some issues over here. So what I'm gonna do is click on these little um, dots right here and I'm gonna drag down and just drop the bevel modifier right down there. And that way it's not going to add the bevel modifier until after it solidified it. Now also you can see there's some more issues. This is like getting thinner kind of on the edge. And so to fix this, I'm gonna click on the even thickness button and that way the thickness will be even all the way around. Now there is one more issue. If you navigate right over here, you can see that there are some issues going on right here. And this is because there are, are a lot of extra vertices right here. So I want to delete the extra vertices so that we just have one ring of vertices going up and down there in the corner. So to fix this, I'm going to press Z and move my mouse over and let go to go into wireframe. And then I want to Alt, hold down the Alt key and select that ring of vertices. I can now press X to delete and I want to dissolve edges. And what that's going to do is it's just going to remove those loop of vertices but it's going to keep the faces. So I can just alt select this and then X and we want to dissolve edges, alt select this and we want to press X and dissolve edges. And then I want to alt select this and we want to press X and dissolve edges. So that way now there's just this loop of vertices right here and it's very straight. And now that looks correct and there aren't any shading issues. And then I can also shade this object smooth. And then also, if you want to, you can see that right here, it's kind of sharp. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to alt and select this loop of vertices. And then I'm going to press control B and control B is going to add a bevel and I can just scroll my mouse wheel out and then click to place that. So you can see now that's much more smooth and that looks a lot better. So I'm going to do that just kind of along here. So I'm going to alt select this ring of vertices. I can press control B to add a bevel and I'm just going to bevel it just a little click to place that and then I can alt and select that and control B again to add a bevel and just kind of bring that out just to smooth out those edges a little bit. And then I'll do that for this as well. So alt select that ring of vertices. I'll press control B to add a bevel, just bring it out a little bit. All right, there we go. So now you can see that is much smoother. Let's just press control S again to save. All right, so now what I wanna do is I want to add a plane kind of out here in the background. And then later on in this tutorial series, we'll be adding a procedural texture to create the stars in the background. So I'll just press shift C again to center my 3D cursor. And then I can press shift A and I just want to add a plane. I can now press G to grab, click and let go with my mouse wheel just to bring it over here. And then I can press R to rotate and I want to rotate this on the X axis. And then I can type in nine zero and enter just to rotate that over by 90 degrees. Then I can press S to scale and I want to scale the whole thing up. So it's quite a bit bigger. So if I go into the camera view, I want this to cover all of the windows. So all the stars will be covering the windows. So I need to tab into edit mode and I want to press S to scale and I want to scale it on the x-axis and I just want to scale that way up and then just click to place that. So back in object mode now you can see that this plane back here is covering all the windows. So later on in the tutorial series we'll be adding a procedural stars texture in the background. So there's going to be like a big sci-fi panel wall thing kind of going all the way around here. So to create this, I'm going to use the same technique that I used to make this window around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the sci-fi panel. We'll use the mirror modifier to mirror it. And then we're going to use a curve and we're going to use the curve modifier to curve it around. So I'm first just going to press shift C to center my 3D cursor and I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go right down here and I'm going to add a cube. 
I can now press G and Z and we're going to bring this up. Just click to place that. And then I can press period on the numpad to zoom over to it. I'm now going to tab into edit mode and I want to first add a bevel right here. So I'm going to select this vertex and then hold down a shift key and select this vertex. And then I want to press control B and I want to add a manual bevel. Now I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel down so that there are no smoothing. So it's not smooth at all. It's just going to be very straight. And then I will just click to place that right about there. So I can now press three to go to the side view and I want to press Z to go over into wireframe and I'll just press A to deselect everything. So what I want to do is I just want to select this. So I'll press B for the box select and just select this. And I want to just bring this back a bit. So I'll press G to grab, click and hold with my mouse wheel and let go to constrain it to the Y axis. And I'll just bring that back a little bit and then just click to place that. So basically what we're creating right here is we are creating the sci-fi panel. So the Darth Vader character that we're going to make is kind of going to be standing right here. And then there's going to be like some sci-fi buttons and things. We're going to be modeling some sci-fi buttons and things right there. And then this is going to be the top. And then this is going to be kind of the bottom of the sci-fi panel. But this right here, this is going to be like the main area where the controls are going to be. So then this right over here, this is pretty long out and we don't really need it to be that long out. So I'm going to go to the face select right here and then I'm going to select this face. I can now press G to grab, click and let go with my mouse wheel and then just click to place that so it's a little bit smaller. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to add the mirror modifier because later on in the next part of the tutorial series, we're going to be like modeling all the sci-fi buttons and details. So I want to model it on one side and then it will be duplicated over to the other side. So I'm going to press G to grab and X on the X axis and I'm just going to bring it over and then click to place that. All right, so now I want to delete these faces right here and here because we don't need them. So I'm going to press three or click right up here to the face select and I'm just going to select this face. We'll press X and we want to delete faces and then right over here I'll select this face and I'll press X and delete faces. So now what I want to do is I want to add the mirror modifier so it mirrors over to the other side. So I'll click on add modifier and we're going to add the mirror modifier. And then I, again I want to turn on the clipping and that way when I press A to select everything and press G to grab, click and hold with my mouse wheel and just push these together. Now they're going to be merged together. So now I'm going to press G to grab and click and hold and let go on my mouse wheel and I'm just going to bring this out pretty far. Um, we can adjust this later if we need to, um, but I'm going to bring it out something like that so it's pretty far. And then I want to add loop cuts because if you remember just like this object, this object, um, we added some loop cuts right here and then there are also some other loop cuts right here and that way there are some more vertices so it can actually kind of rotate around the curve. So I'm going to tab into edit mode on this object and I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. Then I can scroll my mouse wheel out and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel out quite a bit, um, something like that, and then I'm going to left click and then right click so it hops back to the center. So now there are some more vertices so this can kind of rotate around. So I'll tab back into object mode and I want to go right down here and I'm now going to select the curve. If you can't see the curve, you can press Z and move your mouse to go into wireframe and just look around here and you can find the curve. Also right in here in the objects collections, you can see there is the Bezier curve. So I actually want to duplicate this object and then that way it'll be a separate object so I can kind of change the scale of it and things like that and it won't mess up the other curve. So I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and then I'll press G and Z and I want to move it up just like that so I can see it a little bit better. So I now want to select the sci-fi panel object and I want to click on add modifier and we're going to go right down here under deform and it's the third one. We're going to add the curve modifier. So then just like before, I can click right here on this eyedropper and I want to click on this Bezier curve and you can see now it's curving around the curve. So I can now press G to grab and bring it over on the X axis and I just want to bring this over and I'll press seven on the numpad for top view and I just want to bring this over just like that. And then it does look like it's the correct size to me. That does look pretty good. But if for some reason yours is too long or too short, you can press S to scale and just kind of scale it. Or you can also tab into edit mode and you can press G to grab and then bring it over on the X axis and just bring it bigger or smaller. And then you can also add loop cuts in there if you need to. I'm going to control Z that and just tab back into object mode though, because mine is the correct size. I might just scale it up or down a little bit. So I'm now going to shift and select the curve. So we have both of these selected. And then I want to just go right down here so I can see inside the bay. So I can now press G to grab 
and Z on the Z axis. And I'm just gonna bring this down and just bring it way down like that and then click to place that. Now you can see that this object is way too big. So I'm gonna select the object and then I can press S to scale. And I wanna scale this down much smaller and then I'll press G and Z and we want to bring that up just like that. And then I want to press Z and go into the wireframe and I'm just going to find that curve. So let's see, where is the curve object? It's a little bit hard to see. So I know that it's the second curve object. So over here in the collections, you can just find the curve object and here it is. I'll press G and Z and just kind of bring it up a little bit. So it's a little bit easier to see. So I now want to press S to scale and I want to scale the entire curve object down a little bit, um, bring it down just like that. So you, it's a little bit smaller now and now you're really able to see that right there. And then also you can see that there's a lot of the object that's underneath the ground. So I'm going to select this object and then I'll press G and Z and I'm just going to bring it up quite a bit and then I'll press S to scale and scale it down as well and then I can press G and Z and bring that down just like that maybe scale it down a little bit more so that is what I'm going for although I do want to have a little bit more space on the front there but that's basically what I want so I want there to be a lip right there then I want to have the main sci-fi panel right there and then I want to have that kind of going back in now to give this a little more space I'm going to select this object and then I'm going to shift and select the curve I can now press G to grab and Y on the Y axis and I'm just going to bring this over um, just like that, so there's a bit more space. And something like that is pretty good. Um, I think I'll just bring it out a little bit farther, just like that. All right, so now you can see that this is clearly way too small. This is totally not big enough. So I'm going to tab into edit mode um, just to see the entire thing. And I wanna press G to grab, and I'm gonna click and hold with my mouse wheel and just kinda make that quite a bit bigger. And then I can tab back into object mode, and I'm just gonna look and see how big that is. So that is looking pretty good, but you can see that it's not quite long enough. So I'm gonna tab back into edit mode and just navigate over here. So I'll press G to grab and Y on the Y axis, actually X on the X axis. We're gonna make that a bit longer. Okay, that looks good. Let's tab back into object mode. And I'm just gonna go right down here, see how that is looking. So I now want to kind of move this and kind of realign it. So I'm gonna press zero to go to the camera view. And you can see that it's kind of too far on one side. So I'm gonna press G to grab and then X on the X axis. And I can just kind of bring this over. Uh, and bring that back just like that. So we just need to make it a little bit longer. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode. Let's just navigate over here and I'll press G and X and just make that a little bit bigger. And then let's tab back into object mode and that is looking pretty good, although I just need to scale it down a little bit more. So it is a little bit fiddly, but you're just gonna have to play around with this until it looks correct. Now there are a couple problems. One problem is that this is really sharp, so we're gonna need to add loop cuts to make that um, more round. And then also right over here, you're able to see the end of that panel. Um, so we're going to use the curve and just kind of change the curve to fix that. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode on this object and I'm going to add loop cuts right here. So I'm gonna press Control R and I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel out, and I wanna make it just kinda of even about the same amount as this, so about the same size as that. So I'll just scroll my mouse wheel, and then I'm going to left click and then right click, just like that. So now you can see those are all about the same size. So now if I tab back into object mode and go back into the camera view by pressing zero, you can see that looks much more smooth. Um, you can still see some lines there, but we will shade that smooth and that is looking much better. All right, now the other thing that I wanna fix is this right here. So we could just kind of bring the wall in and kind of cover it up, but I don't really wanna do that because I like where the wall is. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the second Bezier curve, or you can just find it right there. I'm just gonna click on it in the outliner. So I can now tab into edit mode and I can just select this curve and I wanna press G to grab and X on the X axis. And really I can just bring that over and then click to place that. So it's really that simple. We're just gonna bring it over till it's behind that wall. And then let's just navigate over here and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I can just select this. And you can see that one actually looks pretty good, but I will just move it over a little bit. So I'll press G to grab and X on the X axis and just move that a little bit over just like that. All right, and there we go. So that is looking very good. So we now have this cool sci-fi panel going all along the wall there. And then the last thing before we finish up this part is I just want to add a bevel modifier onto this. So on this object, I'm gonna click on add modifier and I'm gonna add the bevel modifier. Let's scroll down here. Now I wanna turn these segments up. I think I'll turn it up to like a three. And then this amount here, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click and drag. And I'm just gonna make it pretty small, just something like that. So there's a tiny little bevel there. It should probably be even smaller than that um, but just a little tiny bevel and then using the object context menu I can shade this object smooth 
All right, so I'll just press Control S again to save, and this is gonna wrap it up for part two of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this so far, and thank you so much for watching. So in the next part, in part three, we're gonna be modeling a bunch of the sci-fi details. So we're gonna be modeling a bunch of details on the panel here. We're also gonna be adding a bunch of sci-fi details down here and kind of add some panels and some switches and like control boards and things like that. And then we're also gonna add some sci-fi details right up here on the ceiling. So if you want to go ahead and watch part three, I'll have the link in the description and I'll also throw it right up there on the end screen. Again, I'll be posting one part each day as I'm releasing this tutorial series. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next part.